Ready? Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. This evening we're going to look at some aspects about witnessing for Christ. Uh, the aspect of sharing what we know. Sharing the aspect of our salvation. Our testimonies. Different things like that. And we're going to see some scriptural principles on uh, why we should witness for Christ. And so Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says this, Let your light so shine. Now, you know that different bulbs have different abilities to shine. They have different, like a 40 watt, 60 watt, 100 watt. 100. So each one of those bulbs produce light just at different intensities. And so each bulb is an individual. As a believer, we can individualize our intensity based upon what we have been created to do. You cannot, if you're a 40-watt bulb, you're not going to shine as bright as a 100-watt bulb. And sometimes Christians get frustrated because why am I, it just seems like they are doing more or they have more influence. I see more effects going on with them. What about me? You cannot compare your Christian service whatsoever. That's why the Bible says when they compare themselves with themselves, they are unwise. And so it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see, once again, your good works. And that good works, your good works, can be a variety of different things. Um, and then, Matthew 5, 16, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. That's all we're supposed to do. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So our job on the earth, after we get saved, with all the different things we're learning and growing and having God to take things out of our lives, replace our whole purpose on life is to glorify God. That's what we're supposed to do. That's why as he teaches those different things, we include our lives, and makes us to be able to be more effective in shining our light before men, before our sphere of influence. And all of us have a different sphere of influence. I had mentioned this morning uh, about Lucinda. Um, I, I'm finding, I mean, just it has blown me away about all the different people that Lucinda has ad administered to. Like I said, I was talking to, we were having a meeting about our home and uh, this, this supervisor uh, of Southeast Kansas said, I just want to let you know, Lucinda kept my sanity when I was about ready to go nuts many times. And that's what we mean by that. She would just randomly call. Well, there's no such thing as random calls when you're a Christian. God will motivate you to do that, and you do that. And said so there are many times that she would be so mad and so angry, so frustrated, so discouraged. As soon as says, we well, first of all say, it's going to be okay. Just breathe. If you need to talk, I'm here to listen. Uh, I know I may not be able to be involved with what you're doing, but if you need to vent, I'm here. And then after a little bit, then, then the sinner would say, have you had something to eat? A lot of times when we're not, we have not eaten, we, we take things more emotional. Or would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like a soda? Uh, would you like a sandwich? And then she was well known for making this loaf after loaf after loaf of banana bread. And so um, those, those little things. And, and she said, I miss my phone calls. I miss the banana bread. I said, well, I don't know if I can make it like that. <laughs> and I, I, let me stick to spaghetti. <laughs> and then we'll try something else. <laughs> but, uh, but that was little things like that. So shine that um, that's part of her legacy. That's part of her ministry. And that's why several of those workers are here because of those little things of, um, has everybody had donuts? Have, has anybody had anything to eat? Would you like me? How many people have in your room? What type? What do you want in your drink? And, the, and then she would come in with just donuts and stuff all the time. And uh, But that was her way of so shining. And so sometimes I think we as Christians over-Christianize it, that it has to be something spiritual. Well, when you're dealing with people that are hurting, Sometimes they don't want the extra Christian. They just want humanity. They just want being real, having an understanding. 
and being willing to, to minister to people in so many different ways. And so let your light. And so each of us have been gifted with abilities, some very limited, some more uh, extenuous. But the fact is this, is that let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And like I said, that, that supervisor said, I just miss hearing the sinner's voice. I just miss those banana bread. I just miss that because it was those times that she says, I ha I'm going through these times. I'm thinking, boy, I'm just waiting for that phone call. Where's that phone call at? And it doesn't come. You just don't know your legacy or your impact on Christ until God takes you. That's why the Bible says, they being dead yet speak it. And so being a witness for Christ is just letting people know what Christ has done for you and that you want them to know about the same Christ. That's the aspect about witnessing. And so look at Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1. Look at verse 14 says this. We have a responsibility. Romans 1.14 says, I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. He says, I am a debtor. I owe a debt to those people that have never heard the gospel. I owe a debt to the people like I was at one time, did not know what it meant to be saved, did not know what it meant to ha have my sins forgiven. Many people have never heard that. And Paul says, I am debtor. Look at James chapter 5, James chapter 5. And I love this verse right here because when you explain about what salvation does for people, James chapter 5, verse 20 is a very good one for it says this james 5 20 let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death now there's a comma there so the fact is that we talk about that we're talking about the second death you save them from the second death which is separation from god but then it says this and shall hide a multitude of sins how many of us would want to have all of our sins to be broadcast all over the place? No, I wouldn't want that. And so when you see that, shall hide a multitude of sins, is the fact when someone gets saved, not only are they saved from hell to heaven, but all those sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. They're covered. And so this way, when it says hide all of them, it's not like you put them in the closet like Fibber McGee used to do, but you can literally have the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us from all sins. So when God looks at us, not as sinners, he looks at us just as if we had never sinned. So that's another reason why we should so shine is that people's lives can be drastically changed. And when you talk to people, and I talk to a lot of different people across the spectrum, is that it eventually comes out is that I'm ashamed of my past. Well, I don't know anybody that's very proud of their past. I know I'm not proud of my past, and I don't want anybody to know about my past. That's why I'm thankful that it's under the blood. And so we have a responsibility to do that. But then also look at John chapter 4, John chapter 4. Verse 34 and 35 says this, John 4, 34 and 35. Jesus saith unto them, my meat. Now why is that what's meat? It's sustenance. It's something to supply as a nourishment. Is to do the will of him that sent me and to do what? Finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the field, for they are white already to harvest. So the field is calling us. People out there, they're dying, and they're going to be separated from God with all their, their, their frustrations and angers and angst and memories. And I mean, there's so many self-destructive behaviors that people are 
in their lives. I listen to an awful lot where my office is. I listen to an awful lot of stories. And it just, some of just break your heart, just kind of tug, tug at your heart. And there are many times where I have to just shut my door because normally I keep my door open because there's not a lot of air strength. I shut the door and I just got to weep and say, dear God, whatever else is going on in their lives, please help them. Because if what they're saying is true, that might not be the, the, the hem of the garment of everything else, everything else they're going through. And so we're talking about this broken heart and all the hurts and pains that people are carrying in their lives. It's intensified when they are alone. Look at Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9, verse 37 says this. Oh, verse, let's look at verse 36 and following. Matthew 9, 36 and following says, But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were, and that fainted means they were heavy hearted, and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Basically, wandering around without any hope, without any direction in their lives. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So the field is calling. This world, it doesn't take much to even drive down the street you know, um, or to be involved with other people's lives that you just don't see all the hurt and pain that's out there. This last week, I had, um, we, had, we had some folks camping out here. They were homeless people. And I had to talk to them about some things. And as much as uh, they told me, I said, I've got to obey the laws of the city. And so it was cold that one night. And I said, I'll give you one night. And then you guys are going to have to go because I don't want them to the police and things like that. But uh, you listen to them and you see them. And I'm thinking, boy, what we're, how would I want to be treated if I was in that situation? And that's just the start of it. And I believe that if the Lord carries his coming, it's going, to be a, it's going to get worse and worse, not just around the big cities, but in small cities like Pittsburgh. And so we're, it's literally the field, of the harvest field is coming towards us. And um, we talked a little bit about the Bible. And um, they said, what type of church is that? I said, it's a Baptist church. And there were two tents right there. And one of them said, oh boy, Baptist, all they want to do is convert people. I said, well... We want you to know about going to heaven. Well, I'm fine. Okay, what about you? I ain't talking about it. Well, guess what? If you're here by this time tomorrow, I promise I will sit down. I'll set up a pulpit outside and I'll preach a half hour message. Well, guess what? The next day, they're gone. <laughs> I just, and I was just joking. I was laughing about it. But I think they took me seriously. <laughs> but at Baptists, we're known for telling people about being evangelistic. But they're out there. And... Um, it, they're, they're literally, if someone doesn't care, that's why Jesus looked at them. And that's Jesus' time. And Jesus said, the poor you're always going to have with you. So the generations hasn't changed. It just may be, may be more exhibited or shown more now than ever before. But the fact is that people need the Lord. And that's our responsibility by so shining. But then look at uh, Luke 14. Luke 14. Jesus has chosen us. Uh, Luke 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Are we servants? Yes. Lord said unto the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which are bidden shall taste of my supper. He's been calling and calling and people, they don't want to listen to so we got to do what we can to get people in. But the fact is, God has called us. Whether we feel like we're worthy of it or deserving of it or we're qualified of that, it doesn't matter. God says, I want you to do my bidding. I want you to do my work. We are compelled by God as his servants to just be obedient and letting people know that God is just a God has chosen you to do the most important business of the world as an ambassador of the king, heavenly kingdom 
It's to let people know how they can enter into heaven. And it's just like you have ambassadors all around the world to promote our country and to speak from the uh, as a point of reference from the, the, the head uh, of our, our United States that we as God's people are commissioned by the head of the whole world, God Almighty, by just sharing the message that he gives to us. And it's not condemning, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not condemning, but it's hopeful. And it's, it, it gives them the ability to understand that things can get better eventually. So we have we've been chosen. But then also look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17 says there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So our salvation experience compels us. The newness of the Christian life, the newness of knowing that you can call upon the name of the Lord no matter where you're at, no matter what circumstance you're in, and that you can talk to him. The newness of understanding that you're part of a family bigger than what you'd ever think. The newness of understanding that this is not it on this earth, that you're going to a much better place. The newness of understanding that you have support, that you have an advocate, that you have someone that's going to speak for you when you don't know how to speak. It's the new creature. And because of all these benefits as a child of God, that we should be compelled to not want to hold our faith in, but when those opportunities arise, just to share something about your faith. They're not, God's not expecting you to stand on a street corner with everybody you talk to and to preach a 45-minute message. That's not even re reality. But just being the living epistles read of men to let them know what the Word of God has to say. I mean, my I, I, have, I have people that that I know that, that are in my office that sometimes will watch these videos and or they'll they'll hear something or as they walk past there and I've got some music going on that they'll stop and say, okay, what's the word for today? Uh, I've had to start being a little quicker on my thought process because the first time I said, uh, what do you mean by the word for the day? Well, you're a preacher. You always have something to say. What do you want to say? Oh, oh great. <laughs> oh, are you saved? Well, I expected that from you. You're a preacher, so you, that'd be the first thing you say anyway. So then they walk off. But the fact is that now they say, what good word can I get today because I've had a bad weekend or I've had a bad day or um, there's some people at work that are sick that are having health issues. What good word can you give to me that would encourage me? I've had a problem with my family or things like that or financial problem. What good word do you have to say? You never know what God's going to put you into. That's why you ought to be prepared. That's why the Bible says we ought to have a, an answer, the hope that lies within us. You don't have to have a Bible college degree to have a good word. God, answer my prayer. What were you praying for? Whatever it is, so God answered. I've been asking him, and God answered it. And this is how he answered it. You know, it doesn't have to be a full-length uh, conversation or theological discussion. It's just it's just a word or an encouragement or a phrase. Or I've had someone say, walk past me, uh, Reverend, I'm going to have a bad day today, it looks like. Say a, word, say a word of prayer for me. Gotcha. I'm on it. You just don't know that something like that will not encourage people. I mean, I have people all the time sending me messages on Facebook and other different or just messages say, hey, things are not going well for me right now. I really can use someone to intercede for me. Would you do that? Using your life to the best of your ability. So shine. You may only be a 40-watt bulb. Doesn't matter. There's no comparison because every light bulb, every light has a reason and a purpose for their making. 
And so the amount of lumen and, and the ability to shine doesn't matter because there are some lights that are too bright for certain circumstances. And so you say, well, why would God put me in this situation? Don't know. But I will tell you that I am learning through this, this thing about Lucinda being on how many people that I've run across that are widows of widowers. And just to just break it up a conversation. And it's just amazing. It's, and I've asked them, how do you handle it? I don't. I kind of struggle with it sometimes. And this makes me realize, you know what? I do too. And so then, then, I'll, then they'll say, well, how are you handling this stuff? I said, well, only way I'm handling it is, number one, I have good people that are around me that constantly give me words of encouragement. That's one. Secondly, I know that people are praying for me. That's two. But thirdly, I have a God and a personal relationship with him that I know that I can tell him my problems. And sometimes that's it. Sometimes I say, well, really? I said, do you want me to pray for you? And then, I mean, I was at one store and they said, okay, let's pray. You just don't know. And you may not have that, but whatever it is, that's why, as I said, each of, your, each of the problems and heartaches you've gone through are individualized, just as individual as your fingerprints. You can't replicate fingerprints. And so your life is so unique that God can use your life to touch someone in a way, whereas other people, they're not going to let you get near them. That's kind of like in the bulletin. It talks about put your, put your fingerprints on everybody around you because you just don't know. You just don't know. We serve a big God who has set forth the ability for everyone to have access to heaven. He has provided the access, provided the, the, the conduit, the churches, the word of God, the preaching, the pastors, the church members, the Christians, provide it all. It's just a matter for those to connect. Sometimes they connect and it just it doesn't work very well. Sometimes it connects where they'll just listen. But you just don't know when they walk away what the word of God's going to do and touch their hearts. The Bible says the word of God will not come back void. Just don't know. And get out of this performance-based Christianity of saying, well, I have to see the results. No, you don't. You're not guaranteed to see the results. Even when it says to train up a child the way he should go, and when they are old, they shall return. There are some parents who have trained their children right, and the children have gone off track. And they've wept and they've prayed and they may not see their children to come back, but God's promises always come back in the right way. I can't tell you how many people that in the ministry that I've been at have talked to people where they said, if it wasn't for mom, I know my mom are praying that I know they're not there anymore, but I know that I finally need to get back where I need to be because I want to get back on better, better grounds with my mom or my, or my dad. You just don't know. Let God take care of the results. That's his job. That takes away the frustration. Just be the best you you can be. So shine. Let God give you the opportunity to do the works and leave the rest to him. Because that's glorifying to him. Because there's a world out there that needs you and they need me. And they need Jesus more than anything else. So be the Jesus that they need to see. We serve a big God, don't we? Let's pray. Father, we love you. You're an amazing God. And I just want to thank you for the opportunities that you give to us to share our lives, share our testimonies. Lord, to share our frustrations. Lord, because sometimes the world just needs to know that when you're a Christian, that it doesn't always, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes there's a lot of struggles. Sometimes there's even failures. But Lord, even through all of this, you still seem to work everything out to glorify yourself. Now bless us as we leave this place and bring us back to the next appointed hour. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Good night. Oh, I'm going to take up an offering. Brother Bob, can you take up an offering?
Next weekend is Memorial Day. And so definitely pray for your country. Um, a country's a mess. It's a mess. And so don't allow the things that you can't control to frustrate